We'd like to welcome you to this lecture. I am your host, uh, Asar Mhotep. Um, today's topic is called A Linguistic View of Spirit, Taking the Spookism Out of African Spirituality. Uh, brought to you by the Madhu Indela Institute for the Advancement of Culture and Science. And again, our focus is a linguistic view of spirit, uh, subtopic, taking the spookism out of African spirituality. Before I get started, I like to give praise and honor to five wonderful African, African American ancestors who have uh, paved the way for us in this modern age and who have influenced not only my scholarship but my approach to life and activism as a whole and so to put a name to those who may not be familiar with these particular faces on the top left hand corner we have the Honorable uh, Marcus Garvey at the bottom we have the late Dr. Shekanti Joe on the bottom right hand corner we have Paul Robinson on the top we have Brother Malcolm X and in the center we have the great Harriet Tubman if you are unfamiliar with uh, these individuals I highly encourage you to look them up and to know their stories uh, these are great examples to emulate and in their honor I pour digital libations I say I say to your memory and may your spirit uh, cloak over and guide this discussion Ashe. Uh, this is my re afrientation map, uh, just to kind of give us a visual of the kind of focus that we'll have uh, throughout this discussion, and that is uh, a proper African-centered paradigm, which means that the dialogue of as it regards the topic in regards to spirit will be coming from African sources primarily and so we want to understand how the Africans understood the concept of spirit and how that manifested in their everyday lives and what and not only that but what we can also take home from a re of spirituality from the African perspective and so um, this is going to be kind of general discussion um, but at the same time it's going to um, introduce to some um, or to many various different linguistic concepts as we're going to look at the concept of spirit from a linguistic standpoint first and then explore the living traditions to see how that is manifested uh, we go through the language because the language houses the psychology uh, and motivations of the culture and so uh, all of the the culture is encapsulated in the language so if we really want to understand the crux of African spirituality uh, it is my argument that we must understand spirit from a linguistic standpoint first and then uh, ex use that as a foundation by which to examine the the cultural manifestation or expression of these ideals so this particular slide and map is just to kind of give us a visual of what that means uh, coming from an African perspective. And so the focus of our discussion is uh, again a linguistic view of spirit uh, and taking the spookism out of African spirituality. In many of my discussions we come across a lot of interjection of this word spookism in uh, the dialogues and so I wanted to get a grasp of this and to see if spookism really you know fits within the model in which the ancient Africans uh, developed in terms of spirituality and so if there is any spookism in the modern interpretation of African spiritual traditions to strip it from it and to get to the core and, and real essence of African spirituality so that we have a uh, a more accurate uh, assessment of African spirituality and we can move forward with the most uh, honest and again accurate information so that we can uh, correctly 
included or embedded or integrated into our lives in modern times. And so uh, the Merriam-Webster Dictionary.com defines spookism as the belief or in or the practice of communicating with spooks or spirits, especially spiritualism, uh, a dabbler in wireless and has a specially equipped set which collects the voices of the dead. Uh, Sydney, Australia. Um, it is the essence of spirit and spirituality that uh, again is our focus and so um, it, it appears here by the definition of the dictionary that you know the the spook itself has to deal with spirits and so um, we'll, we'll move a little further and so into this discussion so the next guide uh, coming from the etymological dictionary online um, or the online etymological dictionary uh, gets more specific in terms of the etymology of spook and so <laughs> as we can see here it is a specter or apparition or a ghost and so um, when we talk about spookism in the modern context more than likely people are considering the the concept of a a ghost or like a white you know um, bodiless you know uh, entity that is going around spooking or scaring someone and so as we can see here that its ultimate root possibly comes to from to shine or to spark and so to spook possibly uh, which I would probably argue is coming from the concept maybe of like lightning sparks or flashes and thunderstorms and how that would scare people and so they would spook you and so that that kind of transferred on into uh, the concept of spirit in the spirit world so uh, that that you know is possibly where this uh, particular concept comes from so when we're talking about spookism we're talking about you know, ghosts and spirits that are meant to harm or scare uh, folks. And so with anything, with any ism, you know, the ism is a linguistic suffix forming nouns of action, state, condition, doctrine uh, from the French isme or directly from Latin isma, ismus from Greek, isma from a stem of verbs in isine used as an independent word chiefly disparagingly from 1670s uh, so it just means the action of state condition or doctrine of and so uh, so when we talk about spookism you know it is primarily used in the modern context in either the state of being spooked or a doctrine of spooks and so when when a lot of folks refer to African spirituality and they try to interject the concept of spookism what they're trying to argue is that it is basically a doctrine or a religion of, of spooky spirits um, and that we should turn away from it um, because of this so-called um, attribute of the tradition and so in the, uh, the case of the Nation of Islam you always hear them talk about spookism and you know in general what I say here is in a nutshell that spookism is believing in and teaching the existence of a spirit God the belief is supposed to be belief in God that's not real not human not a flesh and blood not man and so you gotta understand from the uh, nation of Islam perspective that spookism or excuse me that God itself is not a a spirit or a spook or a ghost or a flash uh, but it is an actual human being a human person or human entity and so um, just wanted to bring some clarity or some context for how they are using the concept of spookism uh, since they you know are also involved in a lot of these dialogues as well so <laughs> The etymology of spirit is going to become uh, very critical in terms of really understanding what is going on with the uh, concept of spirit. And so I want to um, put over here, I'm sorry, move this out of the way. Uh, Y'all probably can't even see the little bar, but uh, the etymology of the word spirit as far as spirit in the English comes from um, a breathing, a respiration, um, which 
comes later on to mean an animating or vital principle in man and animals. And so that's what usually the breath uh, means uh, for, uh, it's an animating energy. Without it, one does not live, at least for, you know, living beings. And so the spirit is associated with breath. And, you know, later on is uh, the principle of life itself, uh, the disposition, character, or high spirit, vigor, or courage, pride, or arrogance. Um, and you can see, and this is also coming from um, the online etymological dictionary for those who need the reference. Um, and so, again, this is just in summary, when we're talking about spirit, we're talking about an animating force, we're talking about breath, breathe, we're talking about the wind to blow, life. Uh, and then the disposition, character, high spirit, vigor, courage, pride, and, and arrogance. So it has this range of meaning. It's polyvalent uh, at this particular time in history, uh, but it initially comes from a concept of breathing and wind. And this is going to be very critical because the African words for spirit are, are also connected to this concept, but it's going to take a different twist than what is has survived in the uh, Indo-European languages. And so there's a particular text that uh, I recommend for those who do not have it. It's called The Way of the Elders by Adama and Niami Diombi, Diombia, uh, Ph.D. Uh, and um, there's a particular proverb that is written in the text uh, that says, Wherever there is sky, there is spirit. And so we get an understanding from this proverb that spirit is all around us because as the sky, it covers us, it, it cloaks us. And so wherever there is sky, which seems to be infinite, there is the concept of spirit. And so um, the, for those who are unfamiliar with this text, they deal with a lot of West African conceptualizations of spirit and spirituality. So this is primarily, you know, from... Uh, Nigeria area going all the way down to Senegal in which uh, the areas in which they cover here but these equally apply to you know Africa in general so um, we will see <coughs> excuse me in this particular text that uh, on page four the the authors inform us that every spirit belongs to spirit some of our spirits lived as human beings others are forces of nature they respond to our petitions though they are also operate from their own agendas if we are unaware of any spirits they are better able to exercise their own will and roam about freely the focus of our lives is how effectively to interact with the world of spirit now someone had asked a question earlier about the spirit have its own consciousness so at least according to this text and their research uh, for many of the West African traditions, the spirits itself do have a consciousness. Now, what I would add, or the, the question I would add, is really do the spirits have free will? And so that's something that we may uh, touch on as we, you know, go further into our uh, discussion. But um, again, for for this particular uh, these particular authors, you know, these are living entities. They are conscious. Uh, or have some level of consciousness and they respond to human uh, you know interactions uh, with them you know and so this is the kind of sense that we get you know from an African perspective of what spirit is so it's not just simply the breath uh, but these are they, these are an energy force that is conscious of itself and so um, within that consciousness is uh, the the force, and so they separate the kind of the the concept of spirit from the force that animates spirit, or which spirit is attached to, and they call it inyama. And so they say that inyama is the energy that emanates from spirit and flows throughout the universe. It is the life force that links all of existence together: humans, animals, plants, and minerals. The power of creation and destruction. In Yama commands everything from bountiful harvest to droughts and plagues. It directs the twinkling stars and the rippling tides. This energy of the universe shapes nature into its many forms and yields to our handling of its power. Page 5. And so there's, there's an energy force um, in, in many areas around the continent of Africa. The, the force itself and the, the concept of spirit are one and the same. And we'll see that, you know, there really are kind of different 
you know aspects of the same concept but with some fundamental difference but we'll get into that a little later and so another text that gives us an African perspective of what spirit is is written by a, an, an elder woman by the name of Sabon Fusome um, from the Dagara uh, who is ethnically part of the Dagara people of Burkina Faso she has written a text called the spirit of intimacy ancient African teachings of the ways of relationships and in her text she gives a really excellent uh, articulation of what spirit is uh, at least from the perspective of the Dagara people which coincides with what we find in uh, the previous text in which we just examined and so when indigenous people talk about spirit they are basically referring to the life force in everything for instance you might refer to the spirit in an animal that is the life force in that animal which can help us accomplish our life purpose and maintain our connection to the spirit world the spirit of a human being is the same way. In our tradition, each of us is seen as spirit who has taken the form of a human in order to carry out a purpose. Spirit is the energy that helps us connect, that helps us see beyond our racially limited parameters, and also helps us in ritual and connecting with the ancestors. Ancestors are also referred to as spirits. And so, again, remember our proverb from a few slides back, that everywhere there is sky, there is spirit. And so we understand that in Yama is an energy that emanates from spirit is present in all things. And so this goes into further clarity and lets us know that at least from the indigenous perspective that human beings are spirit in, in material form. And so we had a spiritual origins and you know now we're living out a type of existence as a human being. So we are spirit having a human experience, um, according to these particular texts. And I find this to be uh, relatively true across the continent of Africa. And this is the, the primary consensus um, based on my studies. <laughs> and so now that we kind of have that, you know, understanding of what spirit is in terms of breath, in terms of the life force, in terms of human beings being originally spirit uh, having a human experience uh, or it, or now or basically spirits in, in, in the flesh form we ask the question now well when the Africans talk about spirit in their language what do they mean what do what what can the African languages tell us about spirit and so that is just the cultural what we read before it is just the cultural understanding of, of, of spirit and how they use it in their everyday lives or how they understand it in their everyday lives but now we're going to go into a more critical analysis of these concepts of spirits and to see you know how the shared languages you know view spirit and to see if there is a collective theme you know regardless of the relative words for spirit in these different African uh, localities in which we'll be dealing with throughout this discourse. So with that said, uh, I would like to introduce to some a Mr. Jean-Claude Mboli. He wrote a text in 2010. It may have been re released officially in 2011, uh, but it's called The Origins of African Languages, uh, translating from the French. Uh, this text is actually written in French, and what he has done is reconstructed, used uh, historical comparative linguistics to reconstruct a language family that is called by the French speakers uh, Negro African or uh, Negro Egyptian. And so uh, this Negro Egyptian language uh, has many you know stages and steps and has spread out across the continent of Africa in many different localities. And so because these language groups uh, originate from the same proto-source, you will see the same conceptualizations in all of these different areas uh, because they share fundamentally dialects of the same proto-language. And so <laughs> this is his reconstruction of the, the different branches of the Negro-Egyptian 
and um, I won't go into detail here uh, this will require uh, its own lecture um, but this is just to give you a visual of his reconstruction of these uh, these languages and so how on the left hand side what you see here is kind of a, an early branching off from Negro Egyptian archaic branch one and branch two um, they meet up in, in history they begin to share features um, and then they develop into different dialects and these dialects then be develop into different languages which we can see a few of them at the bottom here so the Hausa language, the Zande, the Middle Egyptian, the Coptic, the Shango and the Somali languages all re ultimately related languages but different dialects of the Negro Egyptian uh, language phylum and so this is for those who are familiar with um, linguistics they will notice that this is going to be drastically different than the Greensburgian uh, tree of languages in Africa which argues that there's four fundamental families and that is Afroasiatic, Niger Congo, Nala Saharan and uh, Khoisan and so again the, the discussion of this aspect is beyond the scope of our discussion but it's just here as a reference uh, for those who, you know, one, can read French, and two, you know, would want to look at this a little bit more closely. And so um, here's just another, you know, variation of uh, the, the dialects that happen from the Negro Egyptian post classic. Uh, the Bere branch and the Be'er branch is, again, we have Middle Egyptian and Hausa, Zande and Mande. And we have basically the Gabaya and pre Proto Bantu and Proto Bantu, and basically Bantu, ultimately uh, Middle Egyptian and Bantu come from the same source. Uh, Dr. Mube Bige Bololo also uh, verifies this. And then on the other branch of the Negro Egyptian, you have the newer Wolof. Wolof is a language that Sheikh Antijob spoke. And, you know, he did his own reconstruction with ancient Egyptian and also said that it is closely, more re closely related to Coptic. Uh, this actually kind of this whole text actually verifies what Diop uh, had proposed in his um, his earlier works and his reconstructions as because Coptic and Wolof are of the same branch. Uh, excuse me, of of the they have the same proto language, um, but ultimately two different dialect, two different branches of uh, the the dialect beer. And so this is just another map from Mboli's work uh, showing the Beer branch and, and where they, you know, migrated over time. And so we see the Luo, the Nair, the Wolof going into West Africa, the Dashango, Somali, Zerma, and Coptic, uh, you know, in the areas of Chad and ancient um, Egypt and Somalia and the Horn. And so this is the other branch we spoke of that was on the left-hand side of the previous, uh, or the two slides back, where the Middle Egyptian, Proto-Bantu, Zande, Hassa, uh, and Bambara languages, you know, ultimately um, had their migrations in time. And so this is important for us because uh, the languages in which we'll examine that have these concepts of spirit you know they're ultimately all related and so we'll see why there's a fundamental similarity between the languages that we examine that are relatable to a lot of these languages which we see in these particular maps and so with that said to this is just a couple of words here for spirit in these different African uh, languages and relatable African languages. Uh, and so we, we see here, for instance, Erhi, which is the spirit double in the Erhorbo language. In Arabic, we have Ria, spirit wind. Hebrew, Rua, Rua, um, spirit wind, temper. Hebrew, Reya, scent. Um, so we can see here that this concept of spirit and wind is relatable to what we saw in. Um, the Indo-European languages uh, from the online etymological dictionary that we saw earlier. The H sound is dropped in the Yoruba languages and so you know instead of saying Rea they say Ori and so it's luck, destiny, Ori, spirit, double and the Lugbara, Ori, so-called ghost and Lugbara, Ori, Indi which is the soul. 
Um, we see in Swahili, Rojo, spirit, soul, Kikuyu, Rojo, spirit. Um, and then we get into the Bantu. We have Rebo, which is spirit, uh, a variation of this word um, based on the labials. And the labials is your, your B sound and your M nasalized uh, labial. Uh, we see chest, heart, soul, spirit. Um, soul, spirit, all of these different variations that we see here, uh, spirit, soul, and so we get a kind of a range of different associations based on just this one example here of this root. And so for those unfamiliar, uh, the H sound, like the P and the H sounds, uh, often uh, the B, the, the yeah the B, P, and H sounds often interchange uh, because of a process of uh, aspiration and so you know what is left with is for instance what we see down here towards the bottom where it says Rebo um, for spirit it becomes uh, you know Rojo or Remo Rumi Rumo Rojo and other languages you know Ori which is lost in terms of ghost spirit uh, amongst the, the Yoruba Reye you know Rua uh, Re you know spirit wind and you know Arabic and so um, you know, different vowels have inter uh, introduced themselves throughout the years, and and so for the record, also these little numbers that you see on these Bantu representations is actually from a 1935 book uh, by Reverend uh, W. Wanger, and um, it's uh, comparing the uh, Bantu languages with the ancient Sumerian languages, and so. Um, those are the, these are the actual, well, on this side, on the right hand side is the actual page number. These are just kind of identifying numbers on the left hand side, but the page numbers are on the right. So if you have that resource, you can see the different languages, um, you know, and, and references for those. And so we'll move on. So this is a different, you know, word for spirit, but we see that the same theme is, 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 uh, coming through, but there's going to be a slightly different, um, association with this one and so uh, let's go back and so we see here that the concept of spirit is also with the chest and the heart uh, in, in here these words hong 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 ohun hama 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 hen hen in the ancient Egyptian and or whatnot we see spirit but it's also connected to snoring the voice or to roar or to mutter to shout it you know to shout or cheering soft words lullaby songs in the thorax and for those who are familiar, the thorax actually controls your breath uh, and, it, and it's and housed in the chest area. It basically is your chest area. And so what they've done is it's a, a semantic shift. So this concept of uh, breath and wind is also associated with the human voice. And so, you know, you cannot have a voice without breath. And so all of these different things are connected in the African languages. And so in, um, in modern uh, English, for instance, we tend to try to separate all concepts and have different words for them. In the African languages, they are um, pretty much, you know, use the same root, you know, for all of these different concepts. You know, a tone here might change, a vowel here might change, but the same consonant root is used for all of these different concepts. And so uh, it makes it easier to trace these words in the, uh, the African languages but just to give you a little heads up so this is a different word that we saw before but we see that the concept of spirit is still associated mm -hmm. with this concept of wind breath but now it's it's um, manifesting itself in the human voice so the human voice is a spirit unto itself and so um, again we're 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 trying to set up a theme here so we're going to have a theme that all of this stuff is going to build on each other so to keep these concepts in mind and so amongst the Yoruba they have another word for spirit, it's called Emmy, which is spirit, but they have another variation, Emmy, um, and I know I'm doing the tones all wrong, um, it's, it's breath, and so the Yoruba word me, breathe, uh, so we can see that spirit, breath, breathe, you know, are all in the, in, in the same category, they all use the same root, in the Igbo, Mumuo, spirit, in the Ga language, Mumo, spirit, Middle Egyptian, it's supposed to be like Ham, uh, to breathe in, in Chiluba, in Yuma, spirit, uh, in, ya, in Yima, soul. And so again, the spirit and the soul are fundamentally the same. And we'll see that again, they all come from 
the, the, the same fundamental root and idea. And so uh, when we saw those RH roots in the, the first slide giving the examples of, of spirit, in, in this one we can see a few of these examples uh, coming from the uh, uh, the reverse and so we saw the Rebo and Bantu and then we have another variation of Bada, Bono, Bada uh, which is name or Billy you know chest and again you um, we can go to Reverend Wagner's um, book uh, the, the official title was Comparative Lexical Study of Sumerian and Intu uh, which was written in 1935 and so those are the page numbers that you can see these particular um, Entities and so in the Shiluba language has a slightly different uh, variation. So we say Mvidi, and that's the word for spirit. It, this is a different variation of the word for Bada, Billy, Chess, Bada, uh, and all of those different things. Um, in the Dogon language, these these terms for the Dogon aren't related, but just they're just here to show that there's a correlation between breath, life, and the soul which all use the same roots in these particular languages. So what, what is introduced here is the concept of the name. And the name is going to be very important. So we have a correlation here. Breath, breathing, life, uh, spirit, soul, voice to command, or, uh, and also name and actually to name, as we'll see uh, later on. So all of these conceptualizations are within the same semantic range. And um, again, we're, we're just building here. So I'm showing you different words for, for spirit in the African languages uh, and, and, and the themes that run throughout these different African, um, these, these different African themes. So um, as we can see here, this is actually from uh, Dr. Joy, uh, excuse me, uh, G.J.K. Campbell Dunn's uh, work in 2006, Who Were the Minoans in African Answer? And so we see this, these, these roots that B, um, which becomes F in other languages, which becomes H in others, um, is the, the fundamental root in dealing with uh, wind, which also has its other conceptualizations uh, and semantic uh, shifts with it as well. So the concept of wind and blowing also is associated with um, flying, and so with birds and things of that nature. As a matter of fact, our English word fly comes from the same exact root, where the B um, it was devoiced to a P, and the P became F. And um, the R and L's interchange in basically all world languages, or these language families. And so uh, what we see here in the bold are these roots um, associated with wind, breeze, blowing, sneezing, um, wings again, paw to fly, uh, which is uh, which leads us to this concept of towards the bottom amongst the Mangvetu, which is kupapa, which is wing, and on uh, the Congo ipapi, wing, uh, lipapu, wing. Um, all of these in Bantu padad, fly. You know, all of these are crucial, especially for those who uh, understand ancient Egyptian. Uh, in religion, so to speak, because there's an entity or a, a so-called deity by the name of Kepera, and the deity Kepera is built off of the same root. And so, um, so you will see in uh, the Mangbeto one variation of it, Kupapa. But um, we will see in the next slide uh, this concept of the divine um, in ancient Egypt at the top you can see is Kepper as the divine breath in, um, in Chiluba. And so in Chiluba we would say Kepper as Chipepu or Chipepwila.